Hello world! In this video I'm going to be walking through the Drum Matrix, which is a Max for Live device. It's a drum sequencer which can step through a sequence linearly or non-linearly. So you can manually move through the sequence, you can automatedly move through the sequence with MIDI, you can step linearly through sequences by default, you can save sequences as patterns, and then generate shapes that look like those patterns or you know say store a second pattern and then get the first pattern and move towards <laughs> the second pattern and use that to move between states do all sorts of fun stuff you can just jam on the state move around whatever it is do kind of walk stuff with sequences and you can also click on the sequence to program it yourself, remove rows, add rows or columns, whatever, etc. Um, that's just kind of a quick primer on how you sequence it. As you can see, you can select libraries and those control samples. So essentially, these are all playing back one shot samples. I promise I'll start making sound soon. <laughs> There's also a real time input mode where essentially the track that it's on in live you can assign this channel to play that input rather than the file and we'll use this ADSR envelope to generate a drum basically from whatever that real-time input is you can see that there are two separate mixes the first mix if you have transport running I'm just gonna loop this so that it's well yeah let's loop that and turn that off because that's just a one shot or that's just a break that yeah so you'll see that it's going at 145 bpm slowed down and it will also slow down so it's tied to the live tempo but it can be at various sort of rates that are related to that tempo and i have tested that 128th notes up to 999 BPM was working on my machine. I don't necessarily know if that means it'll work on everyone's machine, but there's definitely a lot of different speeds that you can play through sequences at. You can change the data length, the, the, the sequence length, by adding columns. You could clear it out and you know do something else, etc. It goes up to 128, I believe. And the fill percentage controls say you want to regenerate just how many cells should be on. The Z depth controls, you can see these have kind of gray values in them because by default, there's actually kind of multiple levels in each cell. Those levels correspond to these Z1 through C4 sliders, and those control the playback speed of any sample that's played with a cell at that level. You can select libraries in groupings of four. So these four pertain to this library and these four pertain to this library. When you select a library, it will save with the drum matrix basically forever until you change it again. <laughs> and you want to select the directory and then click open to actually assign it. So that will be, let's see, that's this, that's that. You can solo any channel, you can mute any channel, you can change the playback range, so let's generate some stuff. <laughs> and let's see if I change the playback speed on Z1 down a lot. Yeah, all right. Starting to hear those fans engage a little bit. <laughs> all right. So by default, when the transport is on, you'll see that it's stepping linearly through this matrix, the sequence matrix, whatever you want to call it. However, you can instead move through the sequence you know whatever you want to generate manually by engaging this 
toggle and then using this slider. And that's can be turned on and off, which can be really fun. And you can program that with MIDI and send it up into audio rates and it uh, will actually play the sequence up, up into audio rate with sample accuracy. So by that's mix one by default. It can step, I'm just trying to make sure I'm clear, it can step linearly by default. Mix one, which is mixed over here, can also be changed into a manual mode with this and do this. Mix two is this over here, controlled by this multi-slider, and it only is on if you're using it manually. It's really fun because it can allow you just a whole different dimension of like rhythmic possibility, and you can mix it separately. So it's really fun. And both of those can be globally pitch controlled, pitch modulated with these dials, which are also MIDI controllable. You can also control each sample's pitch from 1 8 up to 8 times with these multi sliders and you can snap them to quantized values that are kind of in a chromatic ratio relationship. That's most of this panel. Um, I'll go over the, the jam section now. So as I did at the beginning of the video, you can set patterns with this. You first press a number and then press the button to set it, then there's a very, there, there's a se several algorithms that you can use to kind of generate different states that are related to that saved pattern. So toward will move from whatever state you are towards whatever pattern you saved at that number. Shape will generate a pattern like the shape at that number. Get will actually just straight up get the pattern and walk will, it's kind of different, it will just do a random walk on the state where the maximum value that the cell can move is the number you set. The, this algorithm just takes the current input and jams it a little bit, moves it around, and those are the different algorithms, so you can manually engage them by pressing the buttons and using the numbers. You can also set a probability that any of them will run with this multi slider and then click in engage the jam mode. Then every time you complete a cycle, it will pick one and just execute it according to the probabilities that you've selected. So you could say, okay, jam this every time, right? Okay, now nothing's on, so nothing's gonna happen. But let's say I now want to get state one. <laughs> so, yeah, it's all sorts of fun things you can do with this to most of the time jam stuff, but maybe eventually move drifting towards some other pattern, etc. And you can jam every so many bars with this. Fill is just kind of a fun little thing you can turn on and it will solo random channels every so often kind of gives you like a little fill every four bars. I guess I could show you that if you want. <laughs> this thing is so fun. Please buy it. <laughs> Um, okay, so that's up to here, I think. The next control is prob. That controls the probability that the cell, when it's on, and the playback, you know, the sequencer is saying, all right, we're going to play it. It kind of checks prob and determines actually what probability it should play. By default, set all the way to one, meaning it plays all the time but you can reduce probability by a lot and it will change the sequence to a different one every time, basically. So here we go.
turn it all the way off and no notes get through. So that can be set for both sequences or mixes, whatever you want to call them, prob1, prob2. Next is 1 over n tricks. And by default, it's off. You can you have to engage it on a on each mix or sequence, whatever you want to call it. The idea is that instead of playing one of, uh, say I engage it on mix one, and I turn this down to every two, then the low value, which is set by default over here, would be one. It's always one on the left side. One over one triggers will play. But if I move it up on the right, it would be one over two triggers would play. In other words, only every other time that a new trigger is encountered will it actually play back. So it will just change the groove. And then, of course, if you change the 1 over n, that will also change the groove. And that can be really interesting when you use like audio rate to modulate the playback position, but then have the 1 over n be like 500. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, it's just you can do all sorts of stuff. OK, so next would be real time. This would engage a mode where instead of the sample being played on this row, it will take whatever audio is playing back on that track and use that as the input and then generate an envelope that will essentially create a drum of some sort using this ADSR uh, control over here. So in other words, right now this is on a separate channel, meaning that real time would have no input. But if I drag this device over to a different live track, I think you call them, <laughs> where there's a, an amen break playing 145 BPM, um, I think I can. I think I've warped it so I can play it at any speed. And let's say I engage real time mode, and let's just kind of see what happens here. I should probably unmute it. time mode it's really 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 fun finally you can control the wet dry balance between the input audio since this is technically an audio effect and the output of the drum matrix so by default it's on one which means it's just the full drum matrix effect aka it's an instrument <laughs> um, and then there's just some gain controls. This is for wet gain, and this is just ma the main full gain out for the device. OK, awesome. I think the last thing to go over are these controls down here. And you'll see that each of them corresponds to the multi-slider that is above it. So mix 1, mix 2, pitch, prob 1, prob 2, 1 over n, real time. The two that don't adhere to that rule are <laughs> solo one and solo two. Solo one corresponds to the solo controls for mix one. Solo true two controls solo controls for mix two. And each of them essentially can control a kind of like a drifting process on the multi-slider. Where when you turn it on and then increase the modulation amounts on a given channel it will start to just allow that to drift around. So I'll turn the transport on. I'm just going to turn real-time mode off, and there's no programmed sequence right now, so there's no audio. So this is yeah the only thing that is going on, really. <laughs> um, now you'll see that sometimes these mod indices don't update quite right when mix is on that's just because there's a lot of events that are processing so sometimes it's best to set them before you turn the process on but 
still there's there's all sorts of subtle little variations that you can obtain and use to move your mix around and eventually as you see like sometimes they don't the changes don't stick but eventually they do if you're persistent <laughs> so each of these I guess maybe other a couple other things to note about each of them is that you can control like offsets, so it's like all up here, all down here, etc. This is the intensity of the jamming, so you can see that's very subtle. This is much more wild. Then you can also jam mod indices every, and by uh, by default it's off. But if you start to turn it up a little bit, and then say turn it down to every one bar, you'll see that these are jamming a little bit every time too. <clears throat> aka modulating the modulator <laughs> um, so that is something that you can use on each of these to just drift around find new stuff etc jam and that is on mix one mix two pitch prob one prob two one over edge rigs and real time as well as solo um, the only other thing to note about them is that you can set a pattern like this, right? And then all of the future generated states will be derived from that instead. So it can allow you to sort of like keep something rather than, you know, if it's just randomly drifting, you can go all, all, all over the place. This is much more fixed. That's pretty much it. Cheers to all the people that have encouraged me to put it out. Give me feedback, tested it. Much love. Cheers. Bye.